Well, it's time for the International Press Review. And for that, we're going to start with the top story this morning. It is down to two candidates. We have Ron DeSantis dropping out. Let's bring in Erin Ogunke and get a sense of how it's being reported. Yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks, Gavin. As the New York Times tell us, DeSantis's uh, 30 percentage uh, point loss to Donald Trump in the Iowa caucuses uh, convinced him essentially that he obviously has no clear path to victory. The Times says that his entire campaign was punctuated uh, by chaos, starting uh, with the technically marred live stream uh, camp campaign launch event on Twitter. Uh, he also struggled, though, throughout his campaign with Donald Trump's constant mockery, which made him kind of lose credibility uh, in the eyes of Republican voters, uh, mass layoffs for his campaign team, and even fallout from producing a social media video that featured uh, a Nazi uh, symbol. But for the British paper Lagarde, and that wasn't necessarily what ultimately brought his downfall. They argue uh, that it was his culture wars, his focus uh, on the culture wars. They say that groups focusing on keeping race and LGBTQ issues out of school curricula, like he pushed for, uh, ended up underperforming in last year's elections in many places, especially in uh, Virginia. They say that DeSantis's six-week abortion ban ended up being unpopular, not only in his home state of Florida, but also uh, nationwide, even amongst, in many cases, uh, Republicans. Republican uh, voters. And then finally, they say that his actions against Disney after the company uh, chose to speak out against his legislation uh, limiting the discussion of gender and sexuality in classrooms ended up not going so well amongst pro-business Republicans, who, of course, uh, don't want businesses uh, having to keel uh, to the demands uh, of the government. So The Guardian says that uh, Donald Trump has shown that he's, he sh has shown that he's clearly aware of these trends. And for that reason, uh, in recent weeks, he's been rather vague on abortion. He's also spoken much less uh, about culture wars than, than he has in the past. Yeah, interesting. I saw Donald Trump saying that he's officially retired the name Ronda Sanctimonious. Thank you, Donald. Well, here in France, you're keeping an eye out as well how it's been covered in the press, another potential crisis emerging. That's right. That's signs that uh, farmers' anger uh, is rising. They're multiplying, according to the French paper La Croix. For weeks, they've been alerting public officials to their struggles, but it was only after they began uh, blocking a major highway uh, in the south of France several days ago that the government finally started to take uh, the issue seriously. Now, amongst their concerns are skyrocketing costs, a raft of new regulations, especially from the European Union. Uh, they also decry the gap between government injunctions and their reality. The government's says that farmers are essentially uh, responsible or they, they're being tasked with assuring, with guaranteeing the nation's food sovereignty. But they say maybe they have that mammoth task, but at the end of the day, they're struggling to make ends meet uh, at the end of the month. Uh, Libération, for its part, the left-leaning paper here in France as well, uh, reminds us that farmers also uh, immobilized Germany. They blocked borders in Poland. They disrupted imports in Romania and even upended uh, the political landscape in the Netherlands before or beginning to express uh, anger here in France. Still, uh, the farmer situation in France has been really, really well documented since the 1970s, as Libé says. Uh, the paper reminds us that the number of children born to farming families uh, fell by 58% uh, between 1952 and 1972, and that has gone against uh, the national trend for that period. And then the sector also has a much higher number of suicides uh, than others. Over 150 uh, farmers or agricult agricultural workers per year uh, take their own lives. Interesting. And politically, this seems to be one area, the protests that uh, the opposition in France appears to have seized on. Yeah, and not just any opposition, uh, Gavin. It's the National Rally Party in particular that's uh, used this growing movement to highlight its anti-EU stance. Now, mirroring its far-right allies in places like the Netherlands and Germany, uh, the French National Rally dreams of essentially becoming a spokesperson uh, for farmers' anger. Uh, the, the party's leader, Jordan Bardella, as Le Monde tells us, has been painting uh, his party, the National Front, uh, as the only one that's capable of defending uh, farmers against an EU that wants to essentially destroy French agriculture, as he puts it. Uh, in other words, it's an opportunity for the party to kind of revamp its claim that it is the only party that's looking out for forgotten France, uh, similar to the way that they tried to seize on the Yellow Vest protests uh, in 2018 and 2019. Take us to Germany, Erin. What's going on there? Huge protests uh, again against far-right extremism. 
this weekend. Yeah, nearly 1.5 million people, to be exact, took part in demonstrations about uh, against the AFD uh, party over the past several days. And that came after revelations that party leaders had discussed the option of essentially deporting massive numbers uh, of immigrants uh, from Germany. Now, Dirk Tagesspiegel uh, doubts that this mobilization will be enough to contain the rise of the far right, especially because it says that Olaf Scholz's coalition essentially appears to be uh, too fractured by internal divisions to really uh, unite to confront the threat of a rising uh, far right. Now, uh, Der Spiegel has an analysis of its own. They say that while no party seem to have a solution to countering uh, the far right, they know what needs to be done. The paper argues that mainstream parties should uh, resist misleading false dichotomies and simplifications on things like demographic change, global warning, warming, even globalization. Uh, they said that they need to brand racist rhetoric by the far right as such. Uh, and finally, they say they need to stop elevating parties like the AF by uh, placing its issues at the heart of political debates. Of course, they're talking mostly uh, about immigration. Instead, they say that other parties need to start focusing on the AFD's lack of credibility, its hypocrisy, its lies, and its charlatanry, I, I quote. Now, I think there's an interesting piece to finish with, Gavin, uh, from the Economist, because it reminds us that lawmakers are on the path to kind of acknowledging that Germany does need immigration in at least uh, one way. Now, given the country's slow birth rate and shrinking workforce, uh, last week the Bundestag passed uh, two immigration bills. One indeed makes it easier to expel uh, asylum seekers, but the other, well, who have dubious cases, but the other will actually make it easier for immigrants uh, to obtain uh, German citizenship. Gavin. Yeah, it's going to be a big theme for the European elections uh, coming up. Erin, thank you. Erin. Aaron Ogunke with our International Press Review.